السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ عم آباد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیٹ وی اسٹارٹ اور حدیث کلاس فرام ہیئر فرام فوری حدیث آف نووی ٹوڈے از دا کلاس اور فار حدیث نمبر ٹو which is also narrated on the authority of Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu who said while we were one day sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there appeared before us a man dressed in extremely white cloth and with very black hair no traces of journey were visible on him and none of us knew him he sat down close by the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rested his knees against the knees of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and placed his palms over his thighs and said oh muhammad inform me about islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied islam is that you should testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except allah and that muhammad is his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you should perform salah pay zakah fast during ramadan and perform hajj to the house if you can find a way to it he said You have spoken the truth. We were astonished. It was the saying of Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. We were astonished at his touch, questioning Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then telling him that he was right. Then he went on to say, inform me about Iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, it is that you believe in Allah and his angels and his books. and his messengers and in the last day and in fate qadr both in its good and its evil aspects he said you have spoken the truth then the man said inform me about ihsan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam man said it is that you should serve allah as though you could see him for though you cannot see him yet he sees you he said inform me about the hour the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said About that, the one question knows no more than the questioner. So, he said, well, inform me about its signs. He said, they are that the slave girl will give birth to her mistress and that you will see the barefooted ones, the naked ones, the naked, the destitute and the headsmen sheep will compete each other in raising lofty buildings. Thereupon, the man went off. I waited a while and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Umar, do you know who the questioner was? I replied, Allah and his messengers know better. He said, that was Jibreel. He came to teach you your religion. Let me say the sharah of this hadith, the significance of this hadith. This hadith includes within it, it all outward reaction and inward beliefs the sciences of sharia written back to this hadith due to its encompassing knowledge of the sunnah hence the hence some of the scholars have termed this hadith the mother or core of the sunnah just as surah al fatiha has been termed as the mother or core of the quran due to it containing the entire message of the quran this hadith is also known as Hadith Jibreel. The Hadith tells the story of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam asking a set of questions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam responded to those questions and then addressed his companions. There is a door called Bab Jibreel at Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. It is known as the door that Jibreel came in and to ask Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam these questions. Let's come to another topic. Awareness. It is awareness. It is very important for for the diet. Islamic workers to be aware of their surroundings and to recognize what's going on around them so they can act appropriately. Umar radiallahu anhu noticed that a well-kept individual with clean clothes whom he didn't know entered the masjid with no trace of troubles on him. Umar radiallahu anhu was conscious. 
he could sense that this man was not an ordinary man not a man from our own town the dawa we are here talking about the awareness of the dai the dawa the call to islam is very much predicated upon the building of relationship with peoples the people who care about inviting others to islam and spreading the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should notice what's going on around them they should notice when someone new comes into the masjid they should notice if someone is left out or if someone is sitting by him or him herself then they can proceed from there in terms of figuring out how to deal with the situations the call towards the deen of allah is predicated upon brotherhood and sisterhood love for the sake of allah and that requires paying attention to the situations peoples around us next it is etiquettes jibril alayhi salatu wasalam came dressed in a very nice and clean way he said in front of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a very respectful and humble way there are many things that the scholars took from this hadith in terms of seeking knowledge among the etiquettes of seeking knowledge is students should have decent apparel they should look clean as much as possible moreover they should show a high level of respect towards their teachers next outward accents and inward beliefs jibril tends to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says tell me about islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answer was centered around outward accents and he asked him about iman and the prophet's answer focused on internal actions of belief and of thought islam and iman iman are interchangeable concept revolved around the five pillars of actions and the six foundations of belief when islam and iman are mentioned together in the same place then islam refers to the outward actions and iman refers to the inward beliefs beliefs manifests itself the scholars say that a belief lives in the heart and shows itself in the actions and on the tongue for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the muslim is the person who the people are safe from his hands and his tongue and the believer is the one who people trust him with their wealth and themselves the big three things we going to see here islam iman ihsan scholars consider islam iman and ihsan the three stages in the path towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first path is you force yourself and bring yourself to do those actions which you know that allah wants you to do the second level is iman where you are not only doing those actions but you are strengthening your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are beginning to taste the sweetness of your relationship with allah the third level is the level of ihsan which is to worship allah as if you see him and even if you cannot see him to know that he sees you always so you are moving in his path just this journey towards the divine and in doing so it's getting more and more intense let me see about the about the hour the hour when jibril asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about about the hour he said the one who is being asked about is not more knowledgeable than it than the one who is asking here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying this is something that allah keeps to himself it is part of ghaib and sin this is an important lesson because it does not it doesn't matter when the day of judgment is what really matters is what and how we are preparing for it we should be continuously striving to please allah and seek his forgiveness the signs the next <coughs> question was the next question was so tell me about its signs tell me about that uh, which things that will occur the signs are considered as warnings the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave two two of the signs to this particular hadith to the end of the timing one of them is the slave woman will give birth to her master and the tense is feminine so it is referring to her female master one of the interpretation that relates to modern time would be the one who gives birth to supposed to be in power 
and have some sort of lever or authority over the one who she gave birth to it. But this here is flipping of the scale. The one who gives birth becomes the servant of the one who is born. Whereas before the child will respect, honor and listen to their parents. Now it's the complete opposite. And if you look around you will see it. You see and feel as if the parents are slaves of slaves to the children. Parents desperately trying to please the children and moms are trying to imitate their daughters. The second sign is the person will see barefooted, lightly dressed and poor people who are will they will see these people competing with one another in their buildings in the point that here is you have these people who don't have anything they were very poor they suddenly the situation changes them and they are competing with one another over who can build the tallest building they are competing to see who has the nicest car and the latest gadgets etc boundary of allah in the end all of this is from the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah gives us so much and rather than being humble and grateful in front of allah we are arrogant and think that it is all from us righteousness putting full effort and trying one's best will all eventually lead to success and wealth but at the end of the day we still have to acknowledge that no matter how much effort we put on our wealth or success will always be in the hands and the bounty of allah so being successful and having wealth should give us more reasons to increase our humility and increase our gratitude towards our lord hope you all have understood let me finish it here with praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala سبحانك ربك رب العزات عما يصفون وسلام وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك